Uber Eats has recently made some changes in select markets, but are these changes for the better or worse? Stick around and find out. What's up everyone? It's Elijah with the Rideshare Guy, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about the changes that Uber Eats has made in select markets. The overall way that drivers are paid, as well as various information Uber lets us know about upfront, has changed. And just to make sure I don't butcher the names and any of the markets they've changed, I'm just gonna put a screenshot of all the cities that the changes are currently in effect in. So now that we know the markets that these changes have gone in effect in, let's get into exactly what the changes are. So let's get the obvious out of the way. As you can see from the screenshot, Uber Eats shows you more information before you take a trip, which is good. They show you the customer drop-off location, they show you the restaurant, and they also show you how much they're gonna pay you. Definitely good. Now I should note that the amount that you see on the screen when the trip pops up, that may not be the final amount because they do not show the tip. So this is strictly what Uber's gonna pay you, but it may be actually more if the customer tipped. We'll get into that a, a little later but they've also changed how the payment structure works. So before it was a combination of base fare, per minute, and per mile. So you get a standard base fare depending on your market and you would get a per minute rate which would kick in the moment you start a trip, the moment you uh, start a delivery rather. And then you would get paid a per mile rate as soon as you pick the food up from the restaurant. Now they changed it so that what you're overall paid for is a combination of base fare and what they call trip supplementation. So how does this overall affect you? Based on what I've seen with the base fare under these new changes, it's overall gonna vary depending on your market, but it's around two, between two to two and a half dollars. But note that that's subject to change. And this trip supplementation is, they're gonna reimburse you how much the difference between the base fare and the amount they're guaranteeing that you're gonna make when you see the trip. Let's answer the obvious question that you have in your head. Elijah, do you make more money with these changes? Do you make the same or are you actually losing money? Well, let's go over to my computer and we're gonna compare some screenshots I have from my old earnings per trip to my new earnings. And in these screenshots, I drove similar distance. The boost was the same so we can make a overall just very conclusive comparison so let's go to the computer okay on the left side we have the old original earnings before the changes on the right side we have the earnings with the changes so we see that on the left side this trip paid four dollars and 25 cents the distance was 0 0.54 miles and the boost was 1.5 and paid one dollar and 42 cents on the right side which is the side on the new changes the trip paid, we're not going to count that tip, it paid $3.14, the distance was actually more, it was uh, about a mile, and the boost paid a 1.5, and it was $1.01. With this example, on the old model, it paid $8.35, distance was about 7 miles, the boost was 1.3, and it paid $1.94. Now on the right side under the new model, we're not including the tip like usual, Paid six dollars and twenty cents. It was about uh, six point three miles, which is slightly less, and the boost was still one point three, and it paid one dollar and sixteen cents. So overall, less money. In our last example, the old model paid nine dollars and fifty one cents. We're gonna subtract that tip, so we're not including that. The distance was three point two eight miles. The boost was one point nine, and it paid four dollars and fifty one cents. Under this new model, the uh, overall earnings was $6.97. It traveled 4.75 miles, and the boost is 1.9, and it paid $3.09. So the end result in all these situations is you end up making a little less money. Now that we're informed on these new changes, what are the pros and cons? Let's start with the pros. The biggest one in my book is you can now see the customer drop-off location. So it's not so much a matter of hitting the lottery as far as where you end up. You can see that information 
then you can make a judgment call on if you want to take it or not. I mean, I remember the times where I would take a delivery and on the way to the restaurant, I'm just curious where I'm going to be going and only to find out that I'm heading to a place, primarily like another city or just somewhere that's outside of my work zone. And if I knew that ahead of time, I probably wouldn't have took it. Now I have that information so I can make a judgment call on if I want to take it or not. Another big pro is you can now see the uh, restaurant before you take the trip. Before you could zoom in on the map and kind of uh, deduct what the restaurant would be because you're familiar with your market. But in many places, like Uber Eats is partnered with multiple restaurants on a single like strip, like a mall strip, for instance. And you don't know which one of those restaurants it is. You're just going to take a chance, hit it. And if it's not the one that you think it is, maybe you wouldn't have took the trip if you knew exactly what restaurant it is. Now there's no guessing. You know what it is because it says it. And the maybe not the biggest pro, but a huge pro is they show you what Uber Eats is going to pay you before the trip even starts. So you can use all that information to make a full judgment call on if you want to accept the trip or not. And based on those uh, expectations you set, you'll know what you're walking into fully from a monetary perspective, where you're going and also where you end up. Now, let's not be naive. It does have a share of cons, so let's get into it. A huge con is, in most results, as you saw in the screenshots before, you are going to make less money. Okay, So in some instances, you might make around the same, but generally speaking, you're going to make less. Any change that results in a uh, cut in a driver's earnings is always going to be negative in my book. Arguably, the biggest con now is your payment has changed and the information they give you is different so before you had your per mile your per minute rate you knew what your earnings were and what they're based off of but now it's hidden under base fare and trip supplementation so that means that the per mile and per minute rate could be changing on each trip and you wouldn't even know it because you don't see the numbers you could be getting paid 70 cents per mile one trip and 55 cents per mile another trip and that's just not full disclosure that doesn't sit with me that's a con and the last con is they don't show you the tip ahead of time. So they show you the amount that Uber pays before the trip, but that does not include the tip. You, so you're not going to get a full assessment of how much money you could potentially make because they're not showing you the tip. A good example is you could take a trip. It says you'll make four dollars and you decide to decline it because based on the distance, that's just not enough for you. But let's say the customer tipped like six dollars you would have never knew because it didn't appear. And in the Uber Eats app, tips appear one hour later if the customer tipped while they were taking while they were placing the order. I mean, I don't see any reason why that information shouldn't be made up front, but it's not in the current state, so that's a big con. So what are my final thoughts? I say Uber took one step forward, two steps back. I mean, uh, obviously the pros are great, but they don't outweigh the cons and some of these cons are pretty significant it is nice to be able to see the uh, final drop-off location the restaurant and also how much uber is going to pay so they showed more information but it came at the cost of concealing information in a different spot that being how our rates are actually calculated because it's hidden under base fare and trip supplementation so they reveal more information than hid other information in my book that's you're back where you started and then some of these uh, other negatives just kind of bring it down the whole experience. But I would love to hear what you guys think. Do y'all think that this new payment model is good? Is it bad? Is it just kind of neutral? Are you in some of the markets that it's being uh, changed in? If so, what's your experience been with this new pay model or new structure rather? If you're not in one of these markets, how do you feel about it coming to your market? And how do you feel about the information presented in this video? We would love to hear how you feel or your thoughts in the comments below. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave those in the comments too or shoot us an email. We publish videos on a weekly basis, so if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing so you can figure out when we come out with new content for you. And if you found value in this video, consider giving us a like. It's much appreciated. This is Elijah signing off for the Rideshare Guy. Safe and profitable driving, everyone.